Hello everyone. Good morning or afternoon or evening. <laughs> Keep starting off with good morning and then I realize, oh, it's not technically morning for a lot of you guys. <laughs> it's later in the day. Okay, give me a sec here guys. So, originally I was thinking, okay, let's start with well, we can talk about some chirogenic stuff, or we can play games, so we're kind of flexible here. Um, but I guess we can kind of start off with some cryogenic stuff, because, yeah, that stuff is, like, super, super crazy. Okay, so here, let's do this. So we're going to watch a video called World of Cryo Cryonics, Technology That Could Cheat Death. Ooh, sounds spooky. Um, ooh, la la la. Let's get this going. And oh my god, guys, I am totally gonna get freaking YouTube premium. This is driving me nuts, these ads. So this is happening. Okay, let me just get this thing a going. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Where are my lovely window captures? Ah, there you are. Okay, <laughs> let's watch some cool stuff. Okay, I think this is... Okay, that's weird. Where's the sound? Huh. <clears throat> Pardon me. There we go. So behind this stainless steel, there are patients. Holy crap! One day it will be normal medicine. There's a huge potential for this to grow. You know, I just want to yell at the entire world. Don't you get it? You're going to die. I actually did physically hold my father's brain in my hands. The idea of reanimating heads or bodies in a century is wishful thinking. I want to live until tomorrow, and tomorrow I'm going to want to live until the day after tomorrow, and I believe that this desire will continue indefinitely. Oh my god. Welcome to the Oregon Cryonics Ribbon Cutting Ceremony for our newly remodeled facility. We finally have a working clinic, a solid foundation for the future. This day has been a long time coming, and we're so glad to have you here to see it. Okay, let's get started with the ribbon cutting. One, two, three. Have you ever wondered what a room full of cryonicists looks like? Wow. If anybody has mud on their feet of any kind, we have uh, try to shake it off, or we have booties if there's too much. In Salem, Oregon, we were on hand for the opening of the newest cryonics institute in the U.S. Cryonics is the practice of storing a recently deceased person at low temperatures in the hopes that they can live again when future technology enables them to be healed and reanimated. Recently deceased, so they're actually dead. I've come to see what the buzz is about, and to see if freezing people and then reanimating them decades or centuries in the future. I mean, but they're already dead. Okay, so that means restarting their heart, maybe. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> ...is scientifically feasible. How do you feel about cutting that ribbon? I really have been working hard for this. We'll be the third cryonics company. Hopefully we'll have as many patients as the others someday. This is just a barely functional facility right now. There is so much more we could do. Like many scientific innovations, cryonics has its roots in science fiction. In 1931, sci-fi pulp magazine Amazing Stories published the Jameson Satellite. It told the tale of a professor who, driven by an obsession with preserving his body after death, shot himself into the deep freeze of outer space. 40 million years later, he's revived by an alien race who've achieved immortality by transplanting their brains into mechanical bodies. Oh yeah, have you guys seen that? The story planted a seed in the mind of a young Robert Ettinger in 1962. <clears throat> Obsessed with low temperature preservation of the human body, he self-published the book, The Prospect of Immortality. 
Popular sci-fi writer Isaac Asimov put his support behind the book, which led to international publication and fame for Ettinger. In its wake, organizations and companies began to take shape, and the cryonics movement was born. In the Arizona desert, Alcor has been- Hey, Waterloo 33. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. We're at the Alcor Life Extension Foundation. We're gonna see over 130- Are we enjoying this? <laughs> Seriously, that is so cool. Hey, welcome. Nice to see you. How's your day been so far? Are you enjoying cryogenics? I don't know why I keep saying cryogenics. It's cryonics, right? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Thank y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you been up to today? It's a, it's a it's a nice Tuesday here. Yeah? How's the weather where you are? It's like crazy. It is crazy hot today and it's supposed to get even hotter. Like we actually have a heat warning in effect for today and tomorrow. Well, let's see what else is happening. Well, I mean, with the hot weather, crazy hot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, you know what? At least with like the crazy hot weather, we can watch something a bit cold and hopefully feel cooler ourselves. Hey, Zav. Ciao. How's it going? What's up with you? How's your day? patients who are frozen in the middle of the desert. Nice to meet you. Good I'm glad you're doing good. I That's met with great. Dr. Max Moore, CEO of Alcor. Those are the front office area. All the interesting stuff happens down here. Yeah. Death is not something you should oh. accept. It's not natural. It's not It's so um, It's a video on cryonics. So pretty much, you know, I mean, I always thought it was freezing you. Ah, Erko, welcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome. Um, we're watching cryonics. So like... Yeah, this is, okay, so cryonics is the field where you freeze a person, which I assume before watching the first few minutes of this was just before you die. But what they're actually implying here is that like recently deceased people can be frozen for, you know, hopes of reanimating them in the future, which is like, what? So that's news to me. Yeah, yeah, Urkel, I think you're gonna like this. I think a lot of people will enjoy this, seriously. Like, this is some crazy, crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sacrosanct. Really, it's our responsibility to use our intelligence, whether you think it's from evolution or God-given, to solve this problem. Technology will keep improving, and that eventually we'll, we will have those capabilities to restore you. Alcor was founded in- our Oh my God. Did you really just say that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna play this. <laughs> what? Today it has over a thousand members. And are these photos of actual uh, patients? Public patients. With quite a variety. <laughs> As we entered Alcor's facility, it began to resemble the set of a science fiction film, complete with operating rooms, surgical gear, and vast amounts of liquid nitrogen. This is where we store all our patients. Jeez. This whole area, by the way, is reinforced. We've got bulletproof glass. We've got metal wow. plates in the walls just to give as much protection as possible to our patients. We have 134 patients in here right now. Oh, my uh, God. Whole body and several neuro patients in each one of these. Oh, my God. Guys, there's actually people doing this right now. Didn't they say they have 134 patients already? Holy crap. Urkel, well, issue is that putting people into ice is a bad idea as the liquid will crystallize and basically destroy the cells. Yeah, I, I, okay, long time ago, I, I watched this documentary which, where they explained the same thing. They said, um, yeah, because if the water in you freezes, it will expand, right? Because ice is less dense than water. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to rupture different parts. I, I don't understand how they're going to do that either. But, I mean, they've done it. Like, I'm sure they've done the research. So I, I have no idea. That's so bizarre. We have a lot more patients coming in. The cryonics community refers to these frozen bodies as patients. 
because according to them, they're not really dead. They're in suspended animation, waiting to be revived. Why cryonics? Or why should someone have it done to themselves? My fundamental reason for wanting to do cryonics, if all else fails, is that I like living. And I see no reason to accept an arbitrary limit to that. Wow. Cryonics is an extension of emergency medicine, the way I see it. It's people who stop. Wait, Zap? It depends. They inject you with liquid so that it's similar to the frog defrosting. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah, frogs, frogs can, like, pretty much freeze and then essentially come back. What? So even if you get unfreeze, they will need to have something that will regenerate everything. Oh. Oh, well, that was interesting. This is an interesting discussion. <laughs> A few animals freeze during winter. Huh. Well, I mean, there has to be a way out, but I don't know. This is this is a really complicated field. Holy crap. Stop breathing the heart, stop beating. When you've done the best you can, there's nothing more you can do with today's medical technology. Give them to us. We're going to protect their cells as well as we can and oh just drop God. them to a very, very low temperature. They can wait then for decades or even centuries if necessary until technology has reached a level where it can repair the damage done to them by the aging process, by the disease itself, and by the cryonics process. I met Aaron Drake, Alcor's medical response director, who explained to us how this operation works. Wait, don't think of it as water freezing? Yeah, but they have to put something, but you have water in your body, right? They can't just evacuate all the water out. I don't know. I don't know, guys. This is interesting. Like, <laughs> clearly it has sparked an interesting debate. So, ah, let's see what happens. How many times have you done this procedure? Alcor's done this 134 times. I've been involved in 49 of them. And this is where it would happen, right? It, right here. So the body would be right in there. Yeah. Could I go inside of that container? Um, you could. All right, let's get into this thing. Oh, there you go. It's not so bad. As Aaron secured the lid, I gained a first-hand view of an Alcor patient. Oh, wow. Don't do that. <laughs> The guiding principle of the preservation process is called vitrification, a procedure intended to prevent our bodies from freezing and our cells from crystallizing. We do a conventional surgical procedure called a thoracotomy, where we basically open up the chest. Uh, hang on, guys. I just said they prevent your cells from crystallizing. Let's keep watching. Chest, access the heart, and use the body's plumbing, the arteries, the veins, to not only remove the blood out of the vascular system, but all the fluids of the body. We're gonna flush in a medical grade antifreeze. Our bodies are maybe 60 to 70% water. If that went below the freezing temperature, it would freeze, it would crystallize. So that's what destroys the cells. It destroys cells. Oh my God, guys, that is so crazy. Holy crap, that, okay, wow. Okay, they actually drain you and then fill you up with antifreeze. Holy crap. Y'all are gonna kill me, and I'm your next cryo experiment. Finally, the patient is immersed in a liquid nitrogen tank at minus 380 degrees Fahrenheit, where they await their theoretical resurrection. So right now, we can do the first part, we can minimize the damage, we can keep improving that process, but we don't know a whole lot about the revival end. There is a lingering question. You made it. I made it. And you resuscitated. I'm resuscitated. What will it take to revive these human popsicles? No one seems to know exactly, but the possibilities are exciting to think about. What we do know is we <laughs> Yeah, Eric was like, antifreeze, yeah, okay. That's a great idea. <laughs> we'll leave it for the next generation to figure out. Making progress already. Regeneration of tissues, um, growing organs, that's very relevant to cryonics. The most likely scenarios involve advanced bioengineering and nanotechnology. We can certainly envision nanoscopic repair devices that can go into cells, and those are on the drawing board. It doesn't violate any laws of physics. We just can't build them right now because they're very tiny devices. These are treatments using nanorobots no, and synthetic don't enzymes drink that can fix and regenerate <laughs> tissues, literally coding and reprinting new DNA to help create healthy cells. Oops, what the enzyme then cuts the plasmid at this specific point, allowing a new piece of DNA to be inserted. Reanimating a cryopreserved body requires not just the repair of vitrified tissue, but also the healing of whatever illness or condition contributed to the patient's death in the first place. Malignant tumors, diseased arteries, dementia, 
Cryonicists are counting on cures for these kinds of illnesses before they attempt to revive their patients. How long do you think it's gonna be? What's your bet? Is it pink or yellow? Oh my God. <laughs> don't, don't. Your ballpark. Everybody wants to know when will patients come back? Uh, there really can't be an answer to that question for a couple of reasons. And I'll, I'll just give a very fuzzy answer, okay? I'll say it could be between 30 years, extremely unlikely, and 150 years. Now, there really isn't an answer because <laughs> different glow? patients will come back at different times. Stop patients it. preserved with earlier technologies and techniques will on average have received less quality treatment. There'll be more damage to their cells. It'll take more repair. We can show we are preserving tissue very effectively. And it seems no reason why patients won't be revivable at some point in the future. One must also consider the finances of living in one of Alcor's stainless steel capsule. Despite Dr. Max Moore's confidence, the mystery of patient revival will remain for quite some time. So if I walk through this door, you know, tomorrow, say I want to do this, how much does it cost me? If you just want to preserve the brain, it's a minimum of $80,000 for everything. For the whole body, it's $200,000 minimum. People get to choose whether wow. they're public or private, but for instance, uh, one well-known case, we have Kim Swosey, who was a young woman of 23, who had a glioblastoma, a very aggressive brain cancer. We have, uh, I think, a 101-year-old patient in here. It's about our oldest right now. We have Ted Williams, which was supposed to be private uh, back in the day, but since everybody knows that now, uh, yes, we have Ted Williams. He's probably oh our most famous patient currently. Oh, my God. Resting at a comfortable minus 300. Yeah. Last year, in 2014, we did 13 cases. And that was the largest number we've ever had. Our medical response director keeps a watch list basically of members who we know have serious medical problems who are terminal or simply very, very old, and he keeps tabs on those. And that's one reason that we've had a, a very high level of success at being at the bedside at the point of clinical death, something like 85% of cases. Alcor can also provide its members with cryopreservation of their pets, offering them the chance to be reunited with their furry friends. Wow. And if it works, that's a pretty remarkable <clears throat> feature, and one I would certainly come back for. Holy cow. These are these people's right. This is to, to choose. Here they're donating their body to science. People do that all the time. This is just to a particular science project. It might benefit them in the long run. What does a future without certain death or terminal disease even look like? Is this an honest take on tomorrow, or is it too good to be true? Will these patients ever awaken, or are they destined to remain vitrified indefinitely? Wow. Despite the beautiful possibilities my new cryonicist friends explained to me, I was starting to feel a bit skeptical of their frozen utopian dreams. Hey, welcome hey. to the skeptics. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Wow. Michael Shermer is the founder of Skeptic Magazine, where he investigates what he considers the more dubious claims by scientific researchers and organizations around the world. This is our post My skeptical cup of tea. alarm goes off when I hear it. It sounds too much like religion. The cryonics is kind of like a scientific search for immortality. Wait, there's this other problem. Um, we have a population crisis here on Earth. I mean, I would love to live forever, but I mean, if we keep living, then we have to stop having kids because what the heck? Like, you can't just keep creating more and more people. There's we already are running out of resources and food, and that's why we're turning to like less healthy food to eat because we don't have enough food to feed everybody. Or so they say, and there's not enough room. There's really not enough room. There's way too many people already. <laughs> so what is happening, guys? I don't know. I did about on cryonics, science cheat death. But do you think it's possible? They're very upfront saying, look, we can't reanimate yet. But in 100 years, we probably will be able to. Do you think that's wishful thinking? The, today, the idea of reanimating heads or bodies in a century or two or five I'm sorry, he's got a pin that's a skeptic. That's too funny. Oh my gosh. ...thinking, because we don't even know if in principle how you could reanimate a brain. We know roughly where memories are stored and kind of how they're stored, but we still don't know the basis of consciousness. We're going to conquer the technology of bringing it back after it's gone. That's wishful thinking at the moment. Probabilities are so slim that you're better off focusing on something like, you know, just cure heart disease or cancer or something like that, extend the quality of life into the 90s, 100. That has a better hope. You know, it's not just me. I mean, most scientists are skeptical of cryonics. Huh. Urkel. <laughs> now we're in Boston skeptical. to talk to some scientists who research 
extreme temperatures. We're going to talk to them about cryonics. We look at the, the effect of freezing uh, <laughs> and different types of freezing on cells, tissues. Uh, how it happens is fundamental whether or not a tissue or a cell will survive the freezing process. I'm a cryobiologist. I have worked on this problem for 32 years. Could you explain to me what happens when you freeze an organ? 80% of uh, human cells are mostly water. So when you bring water below uh, freezing temperature, zero degree, ice forms, and that's damaging. So to prevent ice formation, what we do is we add lots of other things into the cells that basically prevents water molecules to find each other to form ice. Dr. Toner is a leading expert in cryoprotectants, substances engineering to act at a cellular level to deter formation of ice. Whoa, that is getting, this is getting crazy. I mean, you are dead anyway, so that is at least some way of preservation. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's either this or, or maybe you come back to life in a lot of pain. <laughs> that would be fucked up. Cryoprotectants aren't just for scientists. Some Arctic fish and frogs have proteins that protect them from extreme cold. Antifreeze is used in cars and to de-ice airplane wings. What Dr. Toner can show us is that preserving human tissue a few cells at a time is possible. However, preserving the whole biological human structure of the whole human body is extremely difficult. Oh. What about it doesn't work? There are many things that doesn't work with the idea of freezing a whole head. Uh, number one, you can only slowly freeze and slowly warm large things. Ice is going to uh, form inevitably during uh, warming. Not only does the cooling effect wreak havoc on cells, but the warming process also causes stress and fractures as the tissue undergoes a dynamic shift. This is our lab benches where we do most of our experiments. So we're trying to optimize various types of cryoprotectants. So this is a combination of two commonly used cryoprotectants. So let's plunge it into liquid nitrogen. The sun is being simmered. Yeah. So now it's completely cooled. And when I bring it up, you can see this really nice glass, this clear that's formed. And then as it's warming, now you can start to see that transition into more of an opaque. It's ice. It's ice forming, exactly. Mm. Even this tiny, small sample, which is a tiny fraction of the whole human head, and ice is inevitably will form it. What did it prove or disprove if we're, if we're referring to it in terms of cryonics? What we showed was that even in a small volume, uh, you get this recrystallization that happens and that sort of propagates really quickly through the solution and essentially just kills cells. So mushy brain. So mushy brain, yeah. Uh, the human body has over 100 yeah. cell types, each with a different structure and function from one organ or tissue to the next. A one-size-fits-all solution means that a cryoprotectant will be effective across the entire range of cell types. Currently, this is not considered possible because the chemicals might protect one cell type and may damage everything else. Oh. Therefore, cryopreserving the cells of just a kidney might work. But if you want to preserve a body or a head, cryopreservation becomes exponentially difficult. So if we take a look at them, what we see is they're nice spherical cells. So we have maybe a 90 to 95% survival rate, which is pretty good. Now, if we look at the other cell line, treated exactly the same yeah. way things look a little different. Most of the cells look pretty beaten up. Oh. This is a very complex problem. And they make it sound like, oh, if you vitrify, everything will survive. That's not true. All they say is uh, one day it's possible. They just take people's heads and freeze it. The chances that you will bring the frozen <coughs> head back is the same as when you go home tonight, open the freezer, get the ground beef out, and make a car out of it. So the chances of uh, getting that uh, head back uh, with intact memory is a, a ridiculous Oh, concept. gosh. And when you do that, please call me. I want to see it. <laughs> wow. Cryonics is beginning to gain traction, but it's still faced with many questions. Can reanimation and ultimately an unlimited lifespan be achieved? What if these companies go bankrupt before the proposed technology becomes available? Oh, yeah. Not to mention society's traditional outlooks on life and death. Regardless, a small group of forward-thinking individuals still believe they can overcome mortality. Does it bother you that people have so much skepticism towards it? Yeah, it does. 
It's emotionally difficult to be in a profession that everybody is so skeptical of. So I work through it. I just, uh, I deal with it. But you really believe in it? Oh, yeah. As I met more people involved with cryonics, I began to see how it was a deeply personal thing. It was a way for people to work through their fears, to be part of a community. Matthew Sullivan has been in the cryonics business for over 12 years, wow. helping to cryopreserve over 40 people. If anything goes wrong, I think to, that you feel it personally, because you realize that could be, could be you or it could be somebody that, that you love. And you've handled loved ones before? Yes, my father. Your father? Yeah. How did that make you feel? It was empowering in the sense of... Oh, gosh, this is going to be hard to watch. Um, gosh. Not to mention leaks, errors during storage. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, I, I'm the kind of cat that likes to think that anything is possible, but... I mean, think about it. Like, a thousand years ago, if you said, hey, you know, one day you'll be able to talk with someone across the Earth... Okay, and a thousand is a bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I'm saying. Like, across the earth in a split second, and there's going to be nothing in between you, nothing tangible. People would say, you know, you're crazy. That's impossible. There's, I feel like there's always a way to do something, but maybe not with our understanding right now. There's got to be something. You know, giving my dad a second chance. So yeah. you have your dad's brain in your hands? Yeah, I actually yeah, I get what you mean. physically hold my father's brain in my hands. Uh. Knowing that I could at least try to save his life, even if the chance was 1%, it, it gives me a sense of feeling that, you know, I tried to do something and there is a chance. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Shot. Are you married? Yeah. How does your wife feel about this? <laughs> um, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't agree with me. So, but I mean, most people don't. You know, I, I, I've tried to convince each of my grandparents as they've one at a time said no and died on me. Do you have kids? Yeah. Do you want them to be chronically preserved? Well, of course I do, but that'll be their decision when the time comes. They'll get older and make, their, make up their own minds. Hmm. Another dedicated cryonicist who's worked at Oregon Cryonics is the groundskeeper, Matthew Deutsch. I Deutsch. found out about the field when I was 15 and looking up documentaries on life extension. And then when I was... Wait, keeping the brain is actually a good idea because it is only fat and nerves. So you do not need to play with specific chemicals just to destroy cells. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, the brain is fat. Yeah, okay. 16, I came across an event, a meeting for young cryonics enthusiasts. The concept of no longer existing terrifies me. I don't want to just go to sleep and not wake up. I want to actually have a good chance at reanimation. And Wait, and you also keep some RNA cells as backup. Should work well. Issue is getting the body for that brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, is going to be like something you see out of a sci-fi movie. Just continuing my existence. When I uh, went to the Singularity Summit, and I just just hit me. You're Cryonics so musical. Cryonics is cool. Cryonics is cool. Don't be a fool, I've been a fool of LN2, and I'll see you. I'll okay, this is not helping. <laughs> oh, I'll God. See you in the future. This, this song is not making me feel better about Bravo. this. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the seriousness. A dear friend of his was one of the first patients to be cryopreserved at the facility. She had a neural vitrification on May 6th. 2014. You do have a, a friend in here, correct? Yes, my childhood dog, Cupcake. She was in terminal condition when I was offered employment here. Do you ever walk by the, the you know, the canister holding, holding her and, like, speak to her? <laughs> I, sometimes I go there and have lunch by the canister. When I was holding the frozen preserved brain of a dog named Cupcake, 
I realized how important Chronix is as a belief system that helps people cope with their loss and mortality. Rich, rich, One based yeah. on science rather than visions of $200,000? Yikes. The science questions I have about vitrification and memory are important, but what about the fear of death? They get close to their loved ones, touching their brains as their fears are calmed. Mm. Matthew was so moved by the plight of his furry friend that he composed what he called a cryonics rock opera. Everyone tells me she'll always live in my heart, but I know better. Death is just the start. Are you really afraid of death? Yeah, I am afraid of death in in all ways, and and, and I will never give up. I think it makes my, my life safer. I, I, I behave a little differently than most people because I'm thinking about that all the time. I, you know, I just want to yell at, at the entire world, why don't you get it? You're going to die. <laughs> Here's an option, the only option. So what do you think it's going to be like when someone actually like... Yeah, that song was not pleasant like, to listen to. What do you think that moment will look like? This is a grand experiment. I didn't know if it was going to work, but I made it. I think it would be a fantastic feeling. What I like about cryonics is, again, I'm a scientist. I love the imagination. That part I like. So I've spent 33 years of my day in, day out on thinking about how to freeze things, and I know it's not going to work. Cryonics companies do come and go, and you know we'll see if we stand the test of time and make it a respectable profession. Wow. Oh, whoops, I did not mean to click on that. That is, yeah, that is, uh, wow. That is something, guys. Wow. I don't know, like, yeah, just then you get the whole population problem and, oh, there's, there's so much with this. Yeah. I know people who want to freeze themselves and I know people on the other side of the spectrum who just are like, nope, not going to happen. So I don't know. But, oh, there's actually proven research about blood switching from young people that make you look younger. What? Serious? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I mean, that could be a thing. Instead of, like, freezing yourself, maybe you just prevent your cells from aging. I think that could be something better. Because what our stress, inflammation, all these things cause our cells to get damaged, right, over time. So if you can prevent your cells from getting damaged... Um, and aging and all that oxidative stress and stuff, then, you know, your cells could theoretically just stay young forever. So maybe freezing yourself is not the option. Maybe that's, maybe that's better. Hmm. Erkel, what game would you like to play? Type mouse, they are the same age. Okay, sure. Yeah, we can watch something. Maps, they are the same age. Uh, oh. Okay, yeah, let's, um, oh, I love this channel. <laughs> Part of this video is sponsored by LastPass. More about LastPass at the end of the show. This is a video about research into slowing the rate of aging and extending the human lifespan. So before I filmed this, I wanted to know, what do you guys- Oh, guys, um, I think I have seen this video before. I think. It looks, this part looks familiar and I know I've heard of this before. But this is still really interesting, so let's watch it. You guys generally think about such research, and I made a Twitter poll where I found that the majority of people were supportive and thought there should be more of it. But there were some important concerns, and I want to address those here at the beginning. I mean, the most significant concern was, if we're looking to extend human lifespan, does that just mean we'll have more sick years where we'll be in bed with Alzheimer's? Nobody wants that, and that was clear to me. But the professor that I was interviewing for this video, Professor David Sinclair, points out that as you get older, the risk of horrible diseases, things like diabetes and cancer and arthritis, all those sorts of things, it, it, it increases exponentially. And so 
if this research is successful, the whole point of it will be to forestall those sorts of diseases. I mean, if you really are tackling aging, then you should also see that those age-related diseases do not set in so quickly. So mm, the point yeah. of slowing aging and extending human lifespan is to extend the healthy lifespan, also called the health span. The other concerns I saw were that people were saying, well, this could be used only for the wealthy and increase inequality, or it could increase the population of the earth, causing, you know, garbage more. Technically, if you have young DNA code compatible with yours and use it in an old body, it will use that fresh one to be latched on. Oh yeah, that is so cool. Wow. DO2, you know, where are the resources to feed all these people? <laughs> I think these are valid concerns, but they're not part of the scope of this video. So if you want to discuss them in the comments, feel free. But the point of this video is to address, can we slow aging in humans? Can we extend the lifespan and the health span? And what does that look like? How do we do it? Okay, so for this video, I traveled up to the Bodega Marine Lab, which is north of San Francisco. And there Ooh, I got to see yeah. some moon jellyfish. Now what's fascinating about these moon jellyfish is some people consider them immortal. How can that be? So all these jellyfish have this complex life cycle where they start off as a polyp, which is basically like a small sea anemone, and then they'll go through a metamorphosis and become a medusa. And the medusa... stage is what we generally think of when we think about a jellyfish. And in most of these species, the polyps are generally able to asexually reproduce and they can regenerate if tissue is cut off of them or if they're damaged and they don't Shoot, have any clear bad. evidence of senescence, <laughs> which is the term for biological <laughs> aging. Uh, so they appear to have some degree of immortality. Damn it. No one had reported. I know what happened. I pressed the space bar to pause the video, but instead of pausing the video, it muted me. <laughs> Damn it. It just happened again. That's why I realized that's what it was. I was saying, try to say anemone five times fast. I know I did it again, but I'm, 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 you can hear me now, right? Because it says I'm on. <laughs> you should hear me now. Can you hear me now? Yay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I hit the space bar and apparently that muted me. So, okay. I was trying to pause YouTube. I was on the wrong window, my bad. Ah, okay. Their ability to do this until I think this was 2015. So do moon jellyfish hold the key to slowing aging and extending our lifespan? Could they help us live forever? Before I got into making this video, hey, I would have glass? put this sort of research yeah, in the same welcome. category as downloading account. your brain, your <laughs> consciousness into a computer. Like I can see how maybe that would work, but I don't think we're anywhere near that because we don't even understand how the brain works or how memories are stored. So that seems like serious science fiction. So I would have put, say, extending the human lifespan to 120, 150 and beyond in the same category. But after reading Professor Sinclair's book and doing an interview with him, I think it seems much more possible and in fact plausible that we'll make some progress over controlling aging in our lifetimes. Now, if you want to slow aging, yeah, the yeah, we're trying to, um, okay. So the first video we watched was on cryonics. So like literally freezing people and like, you know, oh shoot, I had to take out that thing. Hang on, <laughs> while, while we talk. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I got, ba, 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 ba. gotta turn that off. Okay, that was for yesterday. Today we'll have a different joint code. Um, yeah, so, the field of cryonics and how you can freeze, you know, the body, but then, you know, most of the body's water and then you'll have ice crystals forming, which will rupture the cells. So then the solution they came up with was draining your body of all fluids, water, blood, everything, and replacing you with antifreeze and then putting you in a vat of liquid nitrogen and then saying, well, um, we're going to leave it for the next generation or next generations <laughs> to figure out how to thaw you without, you know, anything happening. So it was, it's quite interesting. Yeah. So this is Urkel's suggestion, how to slow aging and even reverse it. So instead of freezing yourself, just how to just, you know, not age. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We're trying to find immortality. You got it. <laughs> First question you need to answer is 
why do we age in the first place? I mean, what really <laughs> is Human popsicle, aging? yeah. <laughs> I've made a video in the past about telomeres. These are Ooh. the end caps on your chromosomes. And every time a cell divides, the telomere gets a bit shorter. So it was thought that these uh, telomeres are kind of like the tips of your shoelaces and they prevent the chromosome from fraying. But there are other signs in older bodies that you have old cells. There are an accumulation of things that are called senescent cells. They're essentially these zombie-like cells that just go on living in your body and inflaming the cells around them. There's uh, poor intercellular uh, communication. There's mitochondrial dysfunction. Those are the powerhouses of the cell. There are these eight or nine different features of older cells, and they are the hallmarks of aging. But the question is, are they the cause of aging? or are they kind of the result of a deeper root cause? In the middle of the last century, the hypothesis was that it was damage to our DNA, mutations to our DNA that happened over the course of our lives that led us to be older. But evidence since then has suggested that that is not really the case. I mean, you can take an adult cell and you can clone it into a new organism. And oh, that organism yeah. appears to live about as long as non-cloned. Guys, whatever happened to Dolly the sheep? That was from like 1997, wasn't it? Oh my God. They haven't really talked about cloning since then. I don't, that's interesting. I wonder what's happening in that field. Organisms of the same species. Now the first sheep, Dolly the sheep, had a short lifespan. She died early, but cloned animals, you can now clone a monkey, um, you can clone dogs. In fact, Barbara Streisand, the actress, she cloned her dogs and they're expected to live a normal lifespan. So in that way, Whoa, it seems okay. like all the information Asked is still there in the DNA. So if we're not losing information in our DNA, then what is the reason for aging? Well, Professor Sinclair suspects that it's a loss of information, but not the information in our DNA, in our genome. No, Professor Sinclair suspects that the loss of information is in our epigenome. So what is the epigenome? Ooh. Every cell like in your in body has right the same <laughs> DNA, but different cell types have different epigenomes. They have different ways of packaging that DNA, coiling up you know, a lot of it so that it's not red, and leaving some parts of the DNA spooled out so it's easier to transcribe and turn into proteins and run that cell. So the epigenome is responsible for turning on or turning off different parts of the DNA. And the way it does that is with proteins called histones that uh, essentially the DNA is wrapped on and also things like uh, methylation. So there's these chemical signaling markers which are placed on the DNA in certain positions. So the idea is when your body is first forming, the epigenome is what tells your cells what type of cell to be. But as you get older, Professor Sinclair's hypothesis is that we are losing information in the epigenome. And that's important because if a skin cell needs to uh, remain a skin cell, that's the epigenome. And if you don't have the epigenome, the skin cell will forget what type of cell it is. And it might turn into a brain cell, which may not be that bad, but if your brain turns into a skin cell, you've got a problem. And I think that's largely what aging is. I've got to say, like, there's some weird like, hair patches like, on my shoulder that have happened as I've gotten older. <laughs> is that a cell like doing the wrong thing? Are those meant to be skin cells? Are they s screwing up or is this just some, I don't know. No, no weird, <laughs> weird stuff happens when you get older, right? You start to get hair growing where it shouldn't, ears, nose, back. That's cells losing their identity. Cells go, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. I'm not reading the right genes anymore. So the key huh. to this sort of breakdown okay. of the epigenome is DNA damage? Yeah, so when you go out in the sun, and not like today, but on a, on a day where there's a lot of sun, you'll break your chromosomes. And in the effort that the cells go to to stick the chromosome back together, you know, the DNA isn't just flailing around, it's actually bundled up. The cell has to unwrap it, recruit proteins to help, join it together, and then they have to go back and reset the structures. And that resetting of the epigenome happens about 99%. That 1% is the aging process. Whoa. So over time, histones are not returned to the right places and DNA methylation is added in places where it shouldn't be. 
we can read that methylation pattern and I could tell you how old you are exactly and when you're even going to die. <laughs> how could you tell that? Well, well the, it's a clock. We call it the Horvath clock, named after my good friend Steve Horvath. And so these little chemicals that accumulate on the DNA, like uh, plaque on the teeth, we can read that. And the more you have, the older you are, biologically. Wow. So you might only be 40. You're younger than 40, of course. But <laughs> you, you know, I'm, I'm 50 now. But I might be biologically 60. Actually, I was. Um, and I changed my life. And then the test said I was biologically 31. Wow. I mean, one of the things I found really oh. interesting was you found a way to make mice age faster. So how did you do that? Well, the, the clock of aging is due to the loss of the information in the cell. And one way to accelerate that is to go break a chromosome. Instead of going in the sun, we engineered a mouse where we could break its chromosomes. Oh, Not enough to cause mutations. The cells put the, the DNA back together, so we didn't lose any genetic information. But if we're right about the epigenetic information theory of aging, those mice should get old. And that's exactly what happened. It's gray, it's got a hunchback, it's got dementia, all its organs look old. But the real test was, what if we measured that DNA clock, the, what we call the DNA methylation clock? And we measured it, and those mice were actually 50% older than mice that we didn't treat. So that isn't just a mouse that looks old, that mouse literally is older. What's wow. interesting about this hypothesis is that if it's true, if the noise accumulating the epigenome is really what's causing aging, well then there are steps we can take right now to slow the rate of aging in our bodies by trying to better maintain our epigenomes. So how do we do that? Oh, There's this theory that billions of years ago, early- This is really interesting. Guys, um, it's up to you. Do you guys want to keep watching or do you want to play some games? Up to you. This is pretty interesting so far, but I'm also cool with gaming. What you guys thinking? But yeah, this is a, this is pretty interesting stuff. Holy cow. <laughs> um, I wonder, like, yeah. Waiting for a visit. So no games for me. Aw. Wait, what do you mean? You're waiting for a visit. What does that mean? Somebody coming over? Okay, cool. Aw, oh, all right. Well, that's okay. You'll play with us tomorrow, hopefully. Ha uh -huh. Nicholas, definitely not a cat. <laughs> um, what about you? What are you thinking? You want to keep watching? I guess we can keep watching, huh? And then we can play you play after. Anyways, there's only 10 minutes left. Okay, let's keep watching. Then we'll play. And Erica will just, you'll just chill. You'll chillax. You gotta go to your granny's home. Oh, okay, that's nice to you bring your PC. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good, but I don't wanna put you out. Yeah, if you wanna play, that'd be, that'd be sweet. Yay. <laughs> that sounds good, sounds good. I was saying we could play like the crab game after this. Um, and then maybe tomorrow we can do Jackbox. I think that'll be really cool. But yeah, let's just, I guess we'll just keep watching for a bit. bacteria took an important evolutionary step. Okay, so they actually good. developed two different modes of living. When times were good, they used their energy to grow and reproduce. But when conditions were tough, they used their energy to protect and repair their cells. They evolved what Professor Sinclair calls longevity genes. These genes, triggered by adversity, create enzymes which, among other things, maintain the epigenome. And today, those same longevity genes can be found in bacteria and us. We have these hormetic response genes, or longevity genes, that are in all of our cells. And they sense when we've run a lot, we've lost our breath, or we're hungry, you're a little bit hot, a little bit cold, that these genes are turning on our general defenses against aging. So what is that? So parts of our cells fall apart, they can put them back together. Proteins misfold, they can get rid of them or put them back together. The ends of the chromosomes get shorter, they can lengthen them. A lot of processes that go on, but one of the most important, I think, is maintaining the information, the epigenetic information in the cell, so that our cells don't forget what to do. There are three types of longevity gene. They're the ones we work on called sirtuins, and they control the information in the cell. 
In fact, SIR in the Sirtuin stands for Silent Information Regulator, number two. There are other ones. The other group is called AMP kinase. Oh my God, this AMPK. is like way over my head, guys. This group of genes <laughs> senses how much God. energy we're, we're taking in, oh, for, mostly in the form of sugar. And then the third group is called mTOR, and these genes control and respond to how much uh, amino acids we're taking in. So if you eat a, eat a giant steak, you've got a lot of amino acids coming into your body. That'll actually prevent mTOR from hunkering down and keeping you being longer lived. So the mouse experiments actually bear this out. The best way to ma make a mouse live longer is to reduce the amount of time it eats. So periodic fasting, intermittent mm. fasting. Yes, fasting. Uh, to keep it a little bit cool and to restrict its amino acids. That's the recipe for long life for a mouse. And it's true for monkeys as well. There have been calorie restricted studies where these monkeys for 15 years didn't eat as much food as the ones that gorged themselves whenever they wanted. And they were protected. They didn't just age slower. They didn't get as much diabetes and heart disease. They were actually fit and healthy when the control group eating whatever they wanted aged and became sick quicker. Wow. When some people think about okay, eating, eating less, less, like calorie restriction as a way to extend their life, that doesn't seem like a very pleasant way to extend life. I mean, to be hungry for longer. So are there other ways to, you know, mimic that effect or to simulate that? There are these molecules. <laughs> what are you saying, Nicholas? So what I'm getting from this is don't go vegan, eat meat and chicken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess like, I don't, I don't get, like the only the reason I can understand people not eating meat is to, yeah, yeah, don't buy the ones from a slaughterhouse because that's messed up. Like. Uh, but I, I mean, like, what can we do? Uh, it's, it's, it's a really messed up field. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that, but yeah, you need meat. Like, yeah, we have sharp teeth for a reason. We evolved for <laughs> especially meat, but yeah. Is that turn on the sirtuin pathway and trick the body. And so for Chim example, Ken. in the lab, the if Chim I give Ken? some of our mice a molecule called NMA, which raises the level of a chemical called NAD, you get hyperactive defenses in the body. And what did you see in these yes, you know, dietary issues mice that or you gave yeah, NMN to? I agree. Uh, well, we had a, a bit of an, an incident. These mice that we gave NMN to ran 50% further, Shen but Ken. actually some of them ran so far that the machine, the little <laughs> treadmill stopped working. And we had to reprogram the software because this program had never seen a mouse that ran more than three kilometers. Wow. Three kilometers for a mouse. For an old mouse, they outran the young mice. And that's like an ultra marathon for us. That would be wow. probably like taking a 70 year old and making them run faster than a 20 year old further. Uh, oh yeah, so God. these are ultra marathoners. And if we did that to humans, imagine you could have 90 year olds winning uh, Olympic medals. So to sum up, there are six things that you can do right now to slow the rate of your aging. Starting with zero, avoid DNA damage. Wear sunscreen, avoid x-rays and all that sort of stuff. Number one, eat less, caloric restriction. Number two, eat less protein because your body has ways of detecting how much of that you're taking in. Number three, do some exercise, high intensity interval training. Yeah, that's right, our call. <laughs> high intensity interval training, yahoo. <laughs> and calorie restriction. <laughs> Get your heart rate up to 85%, make your body feel like you're running from a lion or something. Number four, be uncomfortably cold. <laughs> or number five, be Okay, wait, what the heck are you saying, Nicholas? <laughs> I'm going to die tomorrow. And if you do, we'll freeze you. Don't worry. <laughs> we stay young forever. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uncomfortably hot. All of these things will trigger your body's longevity. Okay, hang on. Sorry, I got to pause it. You guys are like, oh my gosh, it keeps pausing it. Okay, <laughs> so I've heard of the cold being cold thing because apparently we have something called brown fat and there's like huge dense stores of mitochondria there. Yes, I know a little bit about this stuff, but not very much. And they say that when you're cold, like your body's uncomfortably cold, that brown fat gets activated and so does the, um, the mitochondria. So it's like, oh, but I don't know about the hot thing. Maybe hot just makes you sweat, which is like detoxing you. Are you talking to Urkel? I need to know. <laughs> genes into maintaining your epigenome, going into repair and protect mode rather than grow and reproduce. And if you think about those things, 
those are generally all the things that we don't do. But what if slowing aging isn't enough for you? Well, this is where my interview with Professor Sinclair took an interesting turn, because he's actually done some research on reversing aging. So how would you do that? Well, effectively, you would need to take the epigenome and reset it back to an earlier time. But how is that possible? Back in 2012, a scientist named Yamanaka received the Nobel Prize for discovering four factors which, when applied in a gene therapy to an adult cell, would reset the whole epigenome back to how that cell was when it was an embryo. So it is what is called a pluripotent stem cell. Now, you wouldn't want to apply that to your entire body because, well, then you would turn into a giant tumor because your cells wouldn't know how to differentiate. But it does suggest that there are ways of resetting your epigenome, and they could be the key to reversing aging. The big breakthrough... Yeah, holy just- crap, guys! <laughs> That's my sentiment exactly, WTF. What? <laughs> just had in my lab, only you know, about a year or so ago, was to reprogram the eye of a mouse. And the eye, we chose the eye because that's a very hard thing to fix, right? If you go blind when you're older, we think that's a one yeah, way fair thing. Enough. You're never gonna recover possible, your vision. Right? But we decided, let's try it anyway. Let's, let's go for broke. So we put a gene therapy in the eye of old mice. Elon Musk. Turned their retinas to be young again, reversed aging in their retinas. So those one year old mice went back to about two months. And guess what? Those mice could see again, just like they were young again. How do you reset one of these eye cells without resetting it to just a stem cell? Well, we have to be very careful not to reset these cells to be basically a a stem cell. Otherwise, we wouldn't have mice that can see. We'd have mice with a giant tumor in the back of their eyes. Oh, wow. So what we do is a couple of things. We didn't use all of the four reprogramming factors that won the Nobel Prize. We used just three. We leave off one called MYC, which causes cancer. And those three seem to be just the right recipe for taking the age of the eye backwards, but not too far. Then the second thing we do is we turn it off. We can actually turn this system on when we want and off again, so that we don't take them too far. Wait, or they introduce young cells to older bodies, which are compatible and they will will use the young genome for reference. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, that's what you were talking about earlier, right? Back in age. Can you do that with any cell? We think we can do this with any tissue. (laughs) <laughs> where we've now given like it to driven. the whole mouse, and those mice are fine. No evidence of cancer. They seem to be really quite healthy. So the big question is, can you take a mouse way back, the whole body, and be totally young again? Maybe back from two years back to two months. And that's what we're doing right now. That's pretty exciting. It's, it's freakishly exciting, actually. I thought we'd just slow down aging. Now we're talking about an aging reset. You know what, we, we've only reset the age of the eye once. But how many times can we do this? Maybe it's twice, maybe it's a hundred times. So Professor Sinclair claims that his gene therapy reversed aging in the mouse's eye and allowed it to see again. But applying a gene therapy (laughs) to every one of your trillion cells is pretty impossible. Turning yourself into a fetus. (laughs) So in order for this to actually work and reset an entire body, you would need another way. And this is where the jellyfish come in. Because moon jellyfish, jellyfish, any cell in an adult jellyfish can actually be reset into an earlier stage of its life cycle. It can what? become a polyp again. So it seems like the jellyfish <laughs> are actually <laughs> capable of activating something like the Yamanaka factors and resetting their epigenomes to an earlier time in their lives. If we're able to figure out how they do that, well then maybe we could do the same with our own cells. We do have the ability to reset our epigenomes, but that is typically only used when we're in the embryonic stage, when we need to maintain all our cells as stem cells. As we age, most mammals, including humans, we lose stem cells over time. And the stem cells we do have become more and more restricted over time into the types of cells they can make. Um, So if we can understand how the moon jellyfish Mm -hmm. can take presumably many different kinds of cells and reverse engineer them, into the cells it needs during regeneration. That might give us an idea of how to do it in our cells as well. So I still think we're a fair ways off from reversing yeah. aging in the entire human body. Yeah, you're right. But about what I found interesting from talking to Professor Sinclair was that there's at least a roadmap, at least 
a path ahead where you can see that it could be possible to slow and even reverse aging. Oh, that is so cool. Hey, this part of the video... This guy's channel is actually so cool. Oh my gosh. I've seen it before, but it's, it's been a while. Oh my gosh. Ah. All right, so, guys, are we playing King of Crafts? Uh -oh. <laughs> so, wait, that means a couple of things. That means we got to get the game going. <laughs> so, all right, let's play... King of Crafts. Oh my god, that was so fun yesterday. <laughs> but that was interesting. Okay. Hang on. This is happening. Okay. Should be working now. You were just gonna ask if we're playing? Yeah, we are! Except it's not capturing the screen. Hang on. <laughs> Carry me. <laughs> Hang on, damn it, where is it? Why is it not showing up? Hang on. <laughs> Nico knows that I'm not reliable. I'm not good enough. <laughs> Hang on. No, Zap, you were good, like, in the beginning. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Hang on, let me, what is happening? It's not working for some reason. I love you OBS, but you have issues sometimes. <laughs> Hang on. Ba, 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 ba. Ah, why aren't you working? Curse you, OBS. <laughs> you guys are awfully patient. I appreciate it. Hang on. Oh my God. This is so not what you guys want to be seeing. I'm going through. Oh my God, what is happening? Okay. You know what? We're just going to do it like this. Screw it. <sighs> okay, there we go. All right. Um. <laughs> Let me get the game going. <laughs> okay, I have to, let's see. Is that the same user ID, guys? Hang on a second, hang on, hang on. 35ACA, oh, it's the same one. Oh, shit, it's the same code, wait, double check. 38, 10, 62, 10, 90, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's the same, oh, sweet. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, oh, cool. Okay, so with that said, I guess I can... Okay, I guess we're good to go. You guys let me know when you're ready. Sorry, you guys were waiting for me so long. You're probably like, yeah, we're ready. As soon as you guys are ready, we will let's start. Yeah, I know Oracle said uh, friends coming over today, so they're not. He's not going to be able to play. But tomorrow we're making Oracle play. So, tough it up, Oracle. You're playing with us tomorrow. Ah, thanks, Nico. <laughs> yes, gamers unite. I am forcing Oracle tomorrow. He knows it. <laughs> Urkel has to play, like, oh, Nico's got Jackbox, so we're, you know, that'd be so awesome. Nico, can we play Jackbox tomorrow? That'll be fun. I've heard things about it. I've never actually played it, but it looks like a lot of fun. And we're making Urkel play with us. Well, I guess we can start, right? Right? Oh, wait, edit? You can edit this guy? What? Oh, shit. Crab hat. Oh man, Nico, that's where you got the hat from. This is an abusive relationship. <laughs> it is so not. Wait, what? 
Wait, what the hell just happened? Well, I got. Okay, guys. Wow, there's a lot of background noise. <laughs> I can't. Hey, God, what the hell's happening? <laughs> I don't know what's. Just... I don't know why it's not showing the screen. Oh, curses. Oh, you can choose different crabs. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, why can't you see my screen? Damn it. Curse you, OBS. Damn it. Seriously? It's not showing. Oh my god, I am so upset right now. Why is it not showing? Damn it. Okay, um... Oh my god. This is just so weird. Restart? Restart what? The game or OBS? I, OBS is not detecting, like, the screen for some reason. Whoa, that was weird. Okay, yeah. Oh, you guys are amazing. Oh my god. I feel like waiting here. How the hell do I escape this thing? <laughs> Does Alt F4 still work to close things? Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is going on? Now we're going to try this again. Now you guys see Steam. What the hell? <laughs> it's on game capture. Come on. Okay. What is happening? Okay guys, just bear with me. I'm gonna try something. Just give me, give me like max two minutes. If you have to go pee, now's the time. <laughs>
Oh my God, I had to check this computer out the window. Okay, <laughs> thank you for your patience, guys. Seriously, um, yeah, screw it. I'm not changing the crab. Let's just play it. <laughs> if you guys are still there, unless you left me, in which I totally understand because that was like totally inexcusable. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Okay, <laughs> are you guys still there? I love these. <laughs> or did you leave me? I totally get it. Change it. What? Change what? Change what? You want me to change my crab? Okay. <laughs> oh wait, Nico's already got the bamboo hat. <laughs> Collect the new stuff and crab look. Oh yeah. Oh, this is what you guys were listening to earlier. Freezes air within a short range, leaving enemies immobilized. Ooh. The blue one is harder hits. Oh, okay. Sweet. Nico, are you still there? <laughs> Urkel's still here, yay! Even though Urkel claims he's in an abusive relationship. I'm gonna wait for Nico because Nico waited. So I felt so bad. Oh God. Oh shit, this is how I do it. Oh, what? Oh, that is cool. Okay, let's go with this rainbow crab. I keep going back. I thought I, damn it. Didn't I just change the crab? Oh, there we go. Thank you, Zap. My bad. <laughs> Freezes air within a short range. Okay. Very cool. I feel bad. I don't want to start with our Nico. <laughs> Urkel and his relationship. What? What relationship? What are you talking about? Oh, I guess we can look at some stuff here. Rock skin? Oh, oh, I see. Jester hat, slap damage plus 100%. Chef's hat? Oh my god, patty hat. Sombrero, squid hat. Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> I don't understand either, Rachel. It's okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't have any more coins. Okay, I get it. Okay, I I have strong hopes for Nico. I know Nico's there, so we're just gonna, let's play. And then Nico, you'll join us when you come back. That's very friendly. Whoa. Okay, not gonna lie, that is kind of loud on my end. I'm just gonna turn that down. Oh my god, I'm in a really bad spot right now. Like, I'm just gonna wait to press start. I do not want to join like that. I'm just... Oh my god. Stop everywhere. Hey, this guy's kind of low energy, but like, oh my god. Oh my god, this guy's got a freaking gun. Jesus, all these guys are huge. Jesus. Oh my god.
Holy guacamole, that is a huge ass. That guy's got an axe and he's huge. So yeah, I just took the leftovers. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. PvP? Wait, oh, you, do you want to do that for the next game? Wait, Zap, what are you talking about? Can't you guys join the game? Oh, you can join the game. I don't know why I got in the middle of that. It was just stupid. Okay, stupid. Oh my god. Crustacean obliteration. <laughs> oh, love it. Wait, Zap, what? Wait, I don't get it. So, should I start a new kind of game? over. Oh shoot, damn it. I probably was supposed to press something else. Okay, let's just end this for now. Okay, um... Player versus player. Oh, this is what you want to do. Ah, uh, this one is hard, <laughs> but, but okay. Okay, let's do it. Nico, if you're there. <laughs> Aw, that's nice. I'm good, thanks for asking. already. <laughs> okay. I swear, this one is way harder. you want to play because you wanted a challenge but like cat, cat girls <laughs> not that skilled <laughs> okay oh my god play smart oh, please it's easy when you're good at it fine like people purposely chase me and then I can't get away at least the computer would act like it wasn't, didn't notice me till I crept up behind it. <laughs> Maybe my best chance. Wait, someone just killed you. I just saw. Oh my God, Zap. I love it. You tell me to play smart, but you just got killed. Oh shit. Is 
Zap, you'd be crazy. Oh my god! Get out of there, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there! Here's a tip, when the sprint bar is full, you can do a charge attack. What? Seriously? Thank ya. Okay, here, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> How do you do a charge attack? I did that the part. And a bit. <laughs> I forgot to ask <laughs> how to do <laughs> Damn. <laughs> to fun so only double click to run away <clears throat> oh i thought double clicking was just oh that uses your energy now you tell me but <laughs> that was just moving around i didn't know i was using up my energy This guy. Holy motherfucker, that guy's huge. Holy shit. Okay, that was like really crazy, guys. Okay, I got a boost. I got a boost here. <sighs> Ooh, mistake. Okay, that guy's huge. Oh shit, no, I don't want to leave that. That's better. Wait! Guys, do I dare? <laughs> this guy is huge. Oh my god! I 
did it! Oh my god, that was like totally a suicide mission, guys. guys. Oh, how you can just like walk sliders through that. Get out, 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 get out. Oh my god, get out of there. There's a lot of eight balls around here. craving crab meat right now. me people. I'm angry. <laughs> Jeez, I, for some, I totally thought I was a Connor there. Boy guys, this is a crabby crab world right here. Oh my god, I'm upside down, I'm upside down. <laughs> Ooh, extra life. Oh my god, I'm a goner, I'm a goner. I'm a goner, I'm a goner. It's the chainsaw and the gun. Like, that's it. <laughs> Damn. Oh. Is it really that hard to defeat a tiny little thing? Oh my god, I'm dead, I'm dead. Fuck! Oh, oh crap! <laughs> Damn it all. Curse you! Damn it, I keep flipping over. Wait, wait, that's it? I thought I had more lives. No! Oh, 
double click. Oh my god, that was just bad. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still doing player versus player. That be fry is crazy. Oh my god, I'm, so I'm being back to being tiny. Wow, wow, thank you. I was alive for like five seconds. You are awesome, Leo, and your little pet. Perfect. And I'm alive. I'm alive and I'm alive for like five seconds. Oh my god, get the fuck away from that. What is that? Station obliteration. Damn it! <laughs> I am like so, so dead. And the heart's gone. Oh, oh it's still there! Ah! Oh god! Oh no! Screw you, you little thing. Oh, you guys are together, huh? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Okay, I'm dead. Life's a beach. <laughs> oh, woe is me. Okay, if I die again, which I'm, I am, I know, but like, I'm, I think I gotta go back to the other one, because like, I suck at this. I mean, better when I, than when I first started. But... I love how when the seagulls die, they look like you know, tuna. Creepy ass spider crab looking thing. <sighs> Guys, I officially suck at this. I am gonna go and play <laughs> something else. Oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna go and try the easier one because I suck at this. It's okay, I acknowledge it. I am I am a cat, not a crab. Close to not working out in my favor. Ooh, turtle limit. Whoa, that is just freaky. Oh my god, getting away from that.
Just gotta go after the small prey right now. Whoa, did I just like get abused by that thing? Oh my god, this guy's got a gun. Jeez, this is no picnic either, guys. Like, this is... I mean, the other one's like way difficult, but like... Oh my god, and I'm gonna be died. that crustacean. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so bad, guys. So bad. And I'm alive. I'm dead. Someone's firing me with the thing. Wow! Wow, that was almost 10 seconds. Almost! But not. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try that again. Oh my god. Ooh. Born into the land of opportunity and born inconspicuously within the leaves. That's the way I like it. Not like the other game where I would be born into a sea of fire and just like, what? Oh my bloody hell, man. that was crazy thing. Whoa! Something just happened here, and there's a coin. Thank ya! Ooh, another coin! Ooh! Gotta get the fuck away from that! Oh, this guy's got a sausage and he's bigger than me. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Another one! Laugh if I get like, killed by one of these yellow ones. Zap, you still there? You still playing? Are you in player versus player? Ooh, a gun. And ammo. Jeez, with a gun, you are like practically omnipotent. Ooh. is a crab carrying a gun. Crab carrying a gun. What? I have a gun! What? I did not... Whoa, guys. into them while I'm shooting the gun. 
Okay? <laughs> so, let's take this cat. I know. to seize the chance. Wait, what? Wait, Final Fantasy or... Wait, what are you guys saying? What do you want to play? Ooh, I got a shield, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Toxic gas? Did you guys see that? Oh, shit. I gotta get out of here. Jeez. Damn you, you shark. You guys figure out what we're gonna play and then I'll play it. What are these like random toy dinosaurs? Oh my god, this person has a gun. Oh, this guy's like almost dead. Seriously? I guess the sword is better. This guy's got a gun, but that was maybe stupid. Oh my god, guys. That was so close to ending badly. <laughs> oh my god, gun, gun. Getting away from there. Ah! Oh, I'm gonna die. Get away, get away. And I'm crap. Oh crap. Let's see what else we got. I guess that sounds good for now. Wait, so are we doing Final Fantasy or are we doing World of Warcraft? Oh my god, why is there so much shit happening to me? Around me, I mean, ah! Oh yeah, there I go and I'm like literally about to die. Talk about being, like, I liked where I was born last time, thank you very much. I just gotta escape quietly. Path of Exile. Exile? Get out of there, oh my god, those fucking sharks are like horrible. Oh! Is that what I think it is? Oh, sweet. Oh yeah. Got a new toy here. This one really takes me to the dark side though. Because I feel invulnerable. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I love the chainsaw, guys. Even more than the gun. Okay, let's see if I can beat the gun. Oh. <laughs> really going to the dark side here, guys. Oh my god, oh my god. With great power comes great responsibility. Damn it! Not their time for a phone call! <laughs> Suspected spam? Yeah. 
Ja. Oh shit, where's my weapon? Ah! Yeah, both parts now. Is this fucking blowtorch even working? God damn it. into that. <laughs> shark turn into a hamburger and a drumstick. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna die guys. I'm gonna die. I know it. I know it. I gotta- Oh shit, what? Elder Scrolls? You guys gotta ask each other because I have no freaking idea how about this stuff. Whatever you guys want to play, I'm cool with. What the fuck? I almost had that. Ah! Curses. Elder Scrolls is not online. Move so slow. Oh my god, get the fuck away from that. Is free? Okay, whoa, get the fuck away from that. Gonna hide my little cramps up. Can you? Can you? I hate these things, I'm gonna get this guy. Ah! I died! I am such a bad player, guys. Like, I will push it until I die, and then I usually die. Someone named Young Nico online. That's not Nico, is that? <laughs> Getting my hopes up. <laughs> ah, get away, get away. Ooh, soy sauce. Don't mind if I do. Turn into sashimi. I wish that happened. It's a free trial. Whoa. Man, that soy sauce makes a mess. Oh, that guy's got a gun. Just walking. Just walking. Oh my god, hamburgers!
chest. Hmm. Now why can't I just like absorb the money? Why do I have to collect it? Oh my god, that guy's got a chainsaw. No freaking way. That is like the ultimate weapon. Just trying to avoid confrontation for now. <laughs> Alright, it's not. Okay, that guy's been small. Okay, it's gonna turn into baseballs. Don't really get how, why, or how things happen here. Wow, this guy turned into a lot of tennis balls. Ah, uh, baseballs. I'm gonna be dead. I knew it. I just knew I realized I couldn't get out of there in time, so I'm like, fuck it! <laughs> Damn. MMO stand for. It's so tiny again. No. What is that? Why is there like a little thing? Oh my god. Scary things everywhere. Ooh, can I keep going on the side? Ah. Oh. Cool. Oh, it doesn't let me go any further. Aww. Wow, I am officially in last place. Lovely. Well, I can only go up from here. <laughs> oh my god, that guy's got a bazooka. Lovely. Keep going, keep going. Oh, I'm afraid, seriously, there's way too many things here that are... Oh god, that guy's gonna... There you go, you'll break it open for me. Oh, thank you. I do not want to attack that crab, that looks frightening. So what does MMO stand for? No, coin. Oh my god, this guy's got a sword. Yeah, fuck that. Jesus! things. Way too many things. I do not feel comfortable. Oh! Hey! My first kill. Oh my god, this guy's got a gun. Not gonna let him turn around. Oh my god. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Crustacean obliteration. <laughs> Damn it. I suck. <laughs> Getting the fuck out of here. Scary stuff is happening everywhere. me or when I ate the dinosaur, did it like, did a box just appear? Oh my god, no, don't you dare! You bastard! That was my gun! Wait, take the chainsaw, take the chainsaw! That's better! Ha 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 ha! Ha ha Take that, take that! You stole my sword! Bastard! Let's go 
find someone really big. <laughs> Oh my god. Ooh, Bazooka. Okay, giant turtle and spider, you guys have met your matches. Ah! <laughs> yeah, 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 and, and a fucking thing here. Fuck! <laughs> Damn it. I thought I was omnipotent with that thing. to the dark side. He's huge. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, even with a fucking badminton racket, I'm not surviving. Okay, that guy's got a gun. Get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, see, if that was player versus player, I would be dead already. And I know what you guys are thinking. She's taking the easy way out. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Because <laughs> I want to enjoy the game and not just die every two seconds. <laughs> oh my god, this guy's got a gun. And he's huge. Oh. Good letter. M for Mega. Oh, he's upside down. Time to get him. Yeah! Oh, my God. Getting away from there. Holy shit, I cannot believe I got that. This is bigger crab. Oh, and he. And again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, damn straight. You better run in you little crabs. Ooh, coins. Oh my god, conflict. Just gonna sleek in here, grab some coins. See you guys later. <laughs> thank you for the thank you for the coins. <laughs> Bazooka now and a saw. Okay, I have to be careful, guys. Last time I had this chainsaw, I took it to the dark side. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh my god, this guy is huge! There's something epic happening over here. Damn it! Ha! 
let them open it and I got nothing. Okay, truthfully, I kind of want to wait for myself, so yeah. I want Axe to double. Come on! Get away! <laughs> what? What? I died too? Oh, you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> Damn it, I had a bazooka too. I didn't get to use it. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. I'm gonna try the new one. Special yar. Oh, one day and six hours. Wait, what? Oh, I want to play with you guys. So I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait till you guys are ready. Then I'll, we'll play that together. Okay. All right. Let's go. That guy's got a gun and a turtle shell as a shield. What a spot. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, I guess I got Max moving over here. Ooh! Blowtorch. Gun. Oh, you can only have one. Okay, that was not smart. How are you supposed to like, fire the gun without running towards them? Urkel, I don't know what I'm doing! How do you fire the gun without- I know you're probably like, I've never played the game, how am I supposed to know? But like, I'm lost! Oh my god, there's so many awesome weapons. Why can't I collect them all? Oh, it automatically fires. And I'm gonna be done. Love it, love it, okay. Let's go, people. Oh my god, this guy's almost done. He's got an axe. Hey, he's dead. Oh my god, get the fuck out of there. Born into the world of fire. What? <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> Damn you, crustacean. guest I think is trying to shoot me or something and I'm just like yeah gotta get in there bitch gotta get out of there gotta get out of there <laughs> Seriously, like I should have definitely got that. 
Born in the weirdest spot again. Let's go, let's go. Oh my god. So did you guys decide on a game you wanna play? This is like a suicide mission right here. Oh shit! <laughs> Ooh, baseballs. I don't know why I left behind baseballs, but I'm a taking them. Oh my god, gun. And I'm walking towards this person. You see, no way that would have happened in player versus player. I would have been dead. Like, dead on arrival. Ooh. That guy's got a weapon. Okay, it keeps saying chest key has up here, but where the hell are these keys? Ooh, ooh, I don't care about that, I see a chainsaw. You got a, you got a gun and I got a chainsaw, bitch. And I got a gun now. <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV. 14. Yes, I do understand Roman numerals. <laughs> And maybe a cat, but I understand such things. Yeah. Ooh, ammo and something else. Hey, did you guys notice how I don't keep clicking off screen like a crazy person today? Yesterday I kept going to the end end screen scene. <laughs> Not today, bitches. Not today, I probably jinxed myself just there. Oh, holy motherfucker. Holy motherfucker, that guy's huge. <laughs> Gotta admit that, that feels good. So I don't think I want to attack this guy, although I am. Car station! I knew it! I knew that thing was not supposed to happen. FX, FF, oh Final Fantasy. Sounds interesting, but I wonder if there's something more futuristic MMO game that is free. Yeah! Whatever you guys come up with, I am A-okay with that. Ooh, I'm still my original size. Yeah. Ooh, I'm in ninth place, which means I am not in last place. I will take it. Yeah, turtle, that's as far as you can go. <laughs> Programmers didn't didn't program any more than that. Because I guess you could just like hide on the bottom of this sea rock. <laughs> Not that I was planning to do that. I need to increase my sustenance. Oh my god, toxic fumes. I can't believe they included that in the game. That is so crazy. Now I'm, I'm going like, kind of, oh my god, he's upside down. Ah! <laughs> I'm so dead, guys. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we killed each other. <laughs> I love it, love it. Oh man. <sighs> that was so good. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. Okay, guys, this will probably be my last game. Um, I do have to leave a bit early today because I have to get to go somewhere, but um, tomorrow the game is on, people. Okay, this guy's almost dead, and he's got a gun. Do I dare? Ah! 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 Jeez. Life's a beach. Okay, no, that was way too fast. Let me do that again. Okay, are you kidding me? These guys all have guns, and they're spawning me here? That is so not fair. This is like the most dangerous place to be born into. Okay, here we go, guys. Oh, scared crackers life. Ah. Ah, 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 ah. That was not even fair. I did 
didn't attack anybody. Yeah, damn straight free blue replay. That was like so unfair. I want my own back. <laughs> this is like literally I was born in a war zone. I did not choose this. I just wanna hide. I wanna hide. Ah! Oh wow, what is that? Oh that was just a leg. What the fuck? That guy's got like a magical sword. This is why, guys. This is why friendly play, as they call it, because, like, yeah, no freaking way. Ah! <laughs> come on, come on, let's go. I gotta attack at least one person. Oh, that's it, that's it, baby. Oh, this guy's energy's low. Oh! Yes! Yahoo! Oh my god! Oh! 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 Get away! Get away! Get away! This guy's got a gun. Do I dare? Oh my god, I actually destroyed him. Hey, how come I don't get his gun? That is not fair. Ooh. Crab and the sausage. <laughs> Damn! Go, caddy! Go, caddy! Go, 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 caddy! <laughs> <laughs> this is like my favorite weapon ever because I am unstoppable with this you see these giant things I am not even afraid of these guys watch this watch this oh oh yeah 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 oh gotta admit I was a bit on the edge there <laughs> ooh gun don't mind if I do this game is teaching me bad lessons. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was small fry. Okay, this guy's got a gun, guys. Well, oh, hammer. Whoa! To be fair, I was already low energy. Yeah, that was that was really stupid. <laughs> I'm a suicide kitty. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, guys. Well, it has been a lot of fun, and I am very sorry to end the stream early. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, tomorrow we'll play definitely a lot longer and maybe some other games that you guys want to play. And who knows, I might be on again later tonight. So we'll see. <laughs> oh wait, tonight. Tonight is technically night for you guys. It's already night for you guys, so maybe... Oh, wait. Okay, yeah, that won't work. But it's okay. If you're awake and I'm on and you want to play. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Thank you, Zad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I shall talk to my Bellas later. Ciao, Bellas, and ciao, my lovelies. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you folks tomorrow. Goodbye, my lovelies. Goodbye.